It's been recently announced that parts of the southeast of England are at risk of drought, something which might surprise you considering that the UK is literally famous for being a place where it rains all the time. In fairness to cliche, this news comes hand in hand with reports of floods in other parts of the country. If you're watching this and you look outside your window and it's raining, you might be thinking, why are we at risk of drought? Well, we can answer that question in two parts. The first thing that we need to take a look at is the difference between weather and climate. Weather is how the atmosphere behaves in the short term. Like if you look outside and it's raining, that's weather. Whereas climate is how the atmosphere behaves over a much longer period of time. And it can be really easy to get the two confused. Let's look at the southeast. So despite the recent rains that we've had, we had a really dry winter last year and a dry start to this one, which affects groundwater reserves. I'll come back to those later. And groundwater reserves is where most of the water in this area comes from. The second part is all about how much water people use. So the southeast has the hat trick of bad luck when it comes to creating the perfect conditions for water shortages. It has a really dense population. On average, it has much less rain than the rest of the UK, and it has some of the highest water users in the country. So while some people think that water comes from the sea or rivers or snow-cut mountain springs, actually, it all comes from rain. And more often than not, the water that you use is collected locally. And the more water that we use, the more that we have to take from the local environment. Most homes need water, electricity and gas to function. But we don't tend to think of water in the same way that we do energy and gas. And up until recently, people have been paying a fixed rate for their water rather than paying for what they use. Most of the water that we use comes from really everyday stuff like showering and washing up and flushing the toilet. And when we overuse, it all really adds up. Like showering, we're only really meant to take around four minute long showers, but a lot of us are taking double or even more than that. There are three main ways that water companies collect water. From rivers, from reservoirs where water is stored from rivers, and from groundwater where rain soaks down through the ground into the chalk aquifer beneath. Groundwater reserves are stored in the aquifer, which are layers of chalk that's topped up by heavy winter rain. That's because in the summer, the ground is harder, so heavy rain tends to rush off into rivers and streams, and the water that does get into the soil is used up by plants or evaporated by the warmer temperatures. We talk about this a little bit more in another video on the channel, which I'll link to in the description. So the buildup of water reserves in the southeast depends on long, steady winter rainfall. But why is this important? As well as affecting our water supply, low rainfall can have an effect on the ecology of our local rivers and fish. We wanted to find out a little bit more about it, so we're going to meet Barry, a fisherman, who can tell us what's changed in recent years. Um, the bit I'm actually quite interested in is, has there been a change to the types of fish that are living in the river? Without a doubt, if we go back 55 years ago, the river from the upper reaches, from its source, there was an abundance of our indigenous fish species of roach, perch, gudgeon, dace, pike. Now, the upper reaches are really devoid mm -hmm. of any fish. There simply just isn't enough water in the river. Certainly over the last maybe 10 years, mm -hmm. I think we've all witnessed what's happened around the country. We'll have long dry spells, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a deluge of rain, you know, for three or four days. It's not something that I experienced years ago. So, I think there should be a bigger emphasis on how we sustain our rivers. Yes, we, we accept the fact that we've got to build houses, we accept the fact that the population is going to grow, and now it is becoming a, a serious problem. There is a greater awareness, I think, now, through the fact that a lot of people are now having water meters installed, um, and they're asking the question, well, why are we having to have a water meter installed? It's simply to try and reduce the amount of water that's being drawn from the, drawn from the uh, system. It comes back to sustainability. That uh, reaches out to so many things in our lives nowadays. Everybody likes to see a river flowing through Absolutely. their village or past their town. It helps to imagine water not as an infinite resource, but as a complex system which is directly affected by changes in the climate. Limited access to water doesn't just affect us, but as we've seen, it also affects our local rivers and wildlife. As for making changes, there are loads of really easy things that we can do to save water, like taking shorter showers or turning your tap off when you brush your teeth. 
To get some helpful, simple tips for saving water, you can follow the TapChat hashtag or you can head over to the Hubbub website. So low rainfall can really affect our local environment as well as how much water that we're using. If you have any top tips on how you can save water, then let me know in the comments and tune back into the channel in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs>